A Rosicrucian influence can be clearly seen in some of America's symbols. For example, this image of a pelican feeding her young appears in Manly Hall's secret teachings of all ages and is very common to Rosicrucianism and Freemasonry. Now notice the great seal for the state of Louisiana. This particular replica is found inside the inner corridors of the U.S. Capitol. The Temple Church in London is a well-known Knight Templar church. Here we can see that the golden rosy cross can be traced back to the mysterious knights. Now, notice the art surrounding this shrine. How a series of squares are shown with red and golden roses in the midst. The shrine opposite has a variation of the same design. Now consider this same pattern as it appears throughout the interior of the state capitol. Inside the old Supreme Court room and in various forms throughout the Library of Congress. Sir Francis Bacon became the chief of the Rosicrucians in England. His famous saying, knowledge is power, is found written inside the Library of Congress, while a statue of Bacon can be seen on the upper level. Elsewhere in the main library is a Baconian passage from his collection of essays. It reads, the inquiry, knowledge, and belief of truth is the sovereign good of human nature. The saying is found over a statue representing philosophy. Could this be an indication that Baconian philosophy governs the New World concept? Bacon took his inspiration from the goddess Pallas Athena, known for her helmet of invisibility. Pallas Athena images also turn up throughout Washington, D.C. The Virginia State Seal bears the image of Athena with her foot upon a fallen king whose crown is cast aside. The word Six Semper Tyrannus, thus always to tyrants, written beneath. To the Romans, Athena was called Minerva. This painting of Minerva can be found in the Great Hall of the Library of Congress. At 15 and a half feet high, it is the most imposing image in the room. Notice she holds a spear that comes like a ray of light from the sun with a traditional helmet of Athena at her feet. This particular work was done by 19th century artist Elihu Vedder. Vedder was known as a symbolist painter whose style was part of a movement that can be traced to France during the 19th century and an art house called the Salon de la Rose Croix. Yes, they were a group of Rosicrucian artists known for promoting symbolic and often bizarre imagery. Some of which, like the image of the satyr, seems to be repeated inside the Library of Congress. It's not clear if Vedder himself was a Rosicrucian, but one of his chief influences certainly was. William Butler Yeats was a prominent member of the Golden Dawn, a Rosicrucian secret society. Yeats, along with Irish mystic William Blake, are said to be two of Vedder's leading inspirations. Vedder's own occult themes are filled with haunting esoteric imagery, like this work, which is called The Cup of Death. In addition to Minerva, Vedder was commissioned to do a series of paintings illustrating government, which can be found at the east end of the Great Hall in the Library of Congress. Now let's look again at this image from the Salon de la Rose Croix. It pictures Leonardo da Vinci on the right, dressed like Joseph of Arimathea, whom occultists believe was the original cupbearer for the Holy Grail. Beside him is Dante Alighieri, dressed as a Knight Templar. By now, most people are familiar with da Vinci's arcane background thanks to Dan Brown's Da Vinci Code. 
Most are also familiar with Dante's Inferno, representing the many circles of hell. But according to Michael Howard, Dante was no ordinary writer. He was, in fact, a Rosicrucian Grand Master who wove Rosicrucian philosophies into his writings. Masonic philosopher Albert Pike wrote that it was Dante who first publicly expounded the symbol of the Rose Cross. Something partly seen in William Blake's sketch of Dante's Paradise, with a cross in the center. But now look at this drawing done by famed artist Gustav Doré. The title of Doré's illustration is, quote, the saintly throng in the form of a rose. This statue of Dante, holding a copy of his Divine Comedy, is found in Meridian Hill Park in Washington, D.C. This is the same park that is said to have marked the sacred 77th meridian upon which Washington, D.C. was built. But one final Rosicrucian emblem in the Library of Congress is worth noting. High up in the ceiling, in between two faunish looking figures with serpents for legs, is what appears to be a traditional crucifixion. But behind the Christ-like figure on the cross is a black, double-headed phoenix. The words in Latin that encircle the image come from Psalm 17.8 a psalm that is often employed in Rosicrucian writings. It reads, under the shadow of thy wings, protect us. The question is, whose wings are providing the protection? <laughs>